Are you creating videos for your online course or your sales pages? Are you using Thinkific as your learning management system? If so, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about everything video on Thinkific. Hi, I'm Kim, better known as Brainy Girl, and we help online course creators get their courses online and into the hands of their buyers. Most online courses now have at least some video content and many of them are very video centric. I get a ton of questions from my audience and my clients about how to use video with Thinkific. And so in this video, we're going to address a lot of those questions and I will give you some expert advice as a longtime Thinkific expert. So where can you use video on Thinkific? Well, there's two primary places that you're probably going to use video. One is inside the course itself in your course lessons. The other places that you might use video would be on your sales pages. You might have testimonial videos or you might have promotional or introductory videos on your sales pages as well. The next question I often get is where do I host my videos? Hosting on YouTube. While you can host your videos on YouTube, to embed within your course or to use on your landing pages, I wouldn't recommend it. And here's why. We never want to take your learners or your visitors, if it's a sales page or a landing page, off of that sales page or out of that course. If you put a YouTube video in there by embedding it or adding it to either your curriculum or to your sales page or landing page, then there's related videos at the end, and even if you don't have the related videos at the end of that video, there's ways that they can click on the video that will take them over to YouTube. Now they're going to go down the YouTube rabbit hole and they're no longer going to be engaged with you or your materials. Hosting on Vimeo. You can certainly host your videos on Vimeo if you want to. However, it's an additional expense, but Vimeo has some options that you would not have with Thinkific um, video. So a couple of them that I can um, kind of point out right now are these interaction tools. So you can add an end screen to your videos that shows a custom image, other videos, related videos, or a call to action. If you're on the business plan, you can actually collect emails or more information and add that right to the video. Again, if you're on the business plan, you can add chapters to the video to help your learners navigate to specific parts of that video. And you can also add relevant content during the video using cards. So these are the interactive elements that video allows that would not be available with Thinkific. Hosting on Thinkific. Now you can certainly host your videos on Thinkific provided that you stay within their video specs and file size limits. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be talking specifically about hosting your videos on Thinkific. What are the video formats and size limits if I host my videos on Thinkific? Here's what Thinkific says about videos uploaded directly to your Thinkific site. We have a two gigabyte limit on the videos you upload, but that does not mean you need to upload a two gigabyte video. Most of the time you can get the same quality with a smaller video size. This will ultimately give your students a smoother experience as the smaller the video, the less data they are required to stream, which is great when connected to Wi-Fi or slower internet connections. As far as supported file types go, there's a whole load of different file extensions that you can use. MP4, MJPEG, MOV, and as Thinkific says here, that said, MP4 is the most popular and widely supported online video file type across all browsers, so we recommend exporting your video in this format. Now, videos that you upload to Thinkific are actually hosted on Wistia, just to confuse things a little more. And so Wistia has its own recommendations for export settings for the video. I'll link to that below. Thinkific also says that once you've created your video, you should consider compressing it to reduce the file size as much as possible. This will make your upload and download speed of your video much faster. You can use any video editing software you prefer, but they recommend the use of Handbrake. And again, I'll put a link to Handbrake in the description below. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the thumbs up, 
to let others know that it was a useful video and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos from me. How do I upload videos to Thinkific? So best practice would be that you upload them to the video library first. You're going to find that here under Manage Learning Products and Video Library. All you have to do is upload, click here, open one of your videos, click upload, and you can do this with multiple videos at the same time. Once it uploads, it's going to show it here in your video library and it'll show it as processing. Now this can take minutes or in some cases, if you're uploading a lot of videos that are high file sizes, this might take hours. So it's a good idea to do this in advance of wanting to use these videos on your sales pages, on your landing pages, or within your courses. Now, if you're going to use them on your landing pages in Thinkific, you need to upload them to the video library first. If you want to embed them in a text lesson or a downloads lesson or something like that in your curriculum, you have to upload them to the video library first. Now, the other way that you can upload videos specifically for video lessons is right within your course settings here under curriculum, add lesson, video lesson, select file, choose your video and wait for it to upload. Put in the name of your lesson. And when it's done, it'll show videos from your library. So basically you've uploaded it to your library from here. It'll show it as processing. So if you went to go and preview this lesson right now, the video wouldn't show. The reason I don't suggest doing it this way and instead upload everything, all your videos to your video library first is because then you can use it across your landing pages, embedded, uh, in this case here, you could actually, instead of uploading it, you could choose from your video library and it's already uploaded and processed at that point. The last question we're going to tackle in today's video is how do you manage your video files? So there's a number of things that I'm going to cover in this section of the video here. Let's go into my video library. We'll click on one of my videos here. And what you can do is actually change the file name of the video. There are many reasons that you'd want to do this. Um, generally, it's a great way to keep things very organized in your YouTube or in your um, Thinkific video library. So you would probably use a similar naming convention for all of your courses. And I would start it with the course name followed by the name of the lesson. The reason that I don't use lesson numbers is if I add another lesson in, in the future, then my numbers are all messed up unless you use, you know, seven, a seven B seven C kind of thing. But ideally you've got the same naming convention, um, for all of your file names in your video library. So let's change that first. The next thing you can do is change your video thumbnail. So I never suggest using autoplay for your videos. And you can actually adjust that in your course settings. And the reason for that is that most of the big browsers like uh, Google and Safari, I believe, and Firefox will all mute videos on autoplay. So by the time your student lands on that lesson within a course, it starts autoplaying, but there's no sound and they figure out they need to click the volume button. They might have missed 15 or 30 seconds of the video. Um, the other reason is you really want them to be engaged and start the video when they're ready to start the video, not when you decide the video should start. So given that they're not going to be on autoplay, you probably want to upload a specific thumbnail image that would show before they pressed play. There's the specs right here and JPEG or PNG you can use for the image. And all you do is click the upload button grab your image, upload it. And now it's going to show you a preview here of what that's, what that's going to look like. All right, let's scroll down. Now you can use closed captions. The, uh, you would need to upload SRT files. So if you use something like temi.com or rev.com to get your videos transcribed, you can actually get them in SRT file format. Once you have that, you would come into the caption section of that video, click on upload, 
and then you could auto show captions or not. Um, the learner can always choose to turn them off if they don't want the captions on. All right, this section here, show play bar. So for this particular video, you can toggle off to hide the video play bar to prevent the user from fast forwarding or skipping through your video. Now this is video specific, so you could use that just for this particular video. The other thing you probably want to adjust is the player color. So again, inside your course where students are taking the course, you think if it's going to give you this default gray color, but you might want to change that to your own branding color. So you can either choose from one of the colors here, or you can put in your own. So it's now changing it to this white smoky color. And then would you like this to apply to the parent settings of all existing videos? I would click yes. So you don't have to do all of those individually. And as you can see here, this is where, this is basically a preview of what that video is going to look like before the student presses play. There's also some analytics at the bottom of this video that you can check out, but you do need to do that on a video by video basis. And one last thing I will show you while we're in the video library is that you do have the option to archive this video. So it would show up in your archives rather than in your active videos that are in your courses. So if you don't want to delete it, you can move it to archived if you're no longer using it. And the other thing you can do is download your videos. So basically you can use this as your hosting for your videos. And I would always suggest having a backup or the original video um, held in Google Drive or on a, a, a thumb drive or something like that so that you always have the original video before you upload it and rely on this video library to be your backup. So once again, thank you for joining me for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you have any questions about Thinkific video, drop them in the comments below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. See you soon.